okay so this video is gonna be for those who wants to start working with electronics because today I'm gonna show you I'm gonna tell you five basic and five advanced things which you will need to start working with electronics so without this wasting time let's get started So the first things first and that is going to be a lab bench power supply. Lab bench power supplies comes really handy while testing your circuits and even providing a decent amount of power to your newly built circuits. But for beginners this is going to be a pretty much tough because that is going to make a hole in your pocket. These are so expensive. The best you can get is the adapters from normal common store even lying beside your bed but those adapters are pretty much less capable of doing things the first thing is it doesn't have a variable output if you buy one 5 volt adapter it will only provide 5 volts and 1 or 2 or 5 amps the max you can get is 5 amps same thing stands for the 12 volt as well as 9 volts i made one using a old computer atx power supply and that is going to be the topic for my next video and I'm going to show you how to make a DIY lab bench power supply using a old computer ATX power supply. In this ATX power supply you can actually get 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, negative 5 volts, negative 3.3 volts and that is pretty much needed for testing a circuit while you will need some decent amount of variable voltages as well as current. This power supply is capable of giving a maximum current output of whopping 16 amps. So the next thing is a breadboard or ferro board, which you are convenient in. I suggest using breadboard for absolute beginners because that that doesn't need any shouldering or you have to just plug in jumper wires in it and test your circuits. The third thing are the static components which may be capacitor, is it a resistor? LEDs or even transistors etc. If you buy basic components of electronics, you will get those in package form. The fourth thing is pretty common that is the jumper wires which you will need to actually plug in to your breadboard or in your vero board to make circuits. And the fifth thing are basic components like strippers, cutters, pliers, or screwdrivers to open something out, some box range etc. to open up nuts and bolts. So that's gone for five basic things you need now I'm gonna switch on five advanced things which you'll need the first thing comes in this list is a multimeter so these are the things everyone every enthusiast every tech enthusiast or every engineer should have in their house because these comes really handy while testing your circuits even testing currents, voltages, even testing transistors, LEDs and measuring temperatures as well. You can buy one from eBay or from Amazon or from wherever you want to buy. So the next thing in this list comes is soldering iron. So these are the basic things you may use that before. So for more advanced people, you may need a soldering station where you can find out the temperatures of the soldering iron tip etc. And the next thing that comes in this list is a pretty, I mean, a pretty advanced topic, and that is the microcontroller, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, etc. Because using these development boards, you can actually create your own programs, your own electronic circuits, and make your own dream into reality. I will make a video series how to get started with Arduino afterwards. The next thing is a glue gun. You may need some hot glue to actually put some wires in there and later you can remove it by just applying a little bit of heat. So hot glue gun you can buy one from eBay, Amazon, wherever you want. Even now the local stores are keeping that. And the last thing but not the least, basically the last for this video is a thermometer or a thermal sensor. You may find that as a infrared thermal sensor that may cost you a lot of money. As a beginner, I recommend using uh, a normal thermal tip sensor, which you may get with some good multimeters. I have one and I do not have any IR thermal sensor, so I just use that as my thermometer, which may come handy while testing some of the circuits like IC transistors that produces pretty much amount of heat and Using that you have to diagnose what kind of heat sink you will need 
to actually fix that heat so that pretty much sums up for today hope you enjoyed give it a thumbs up if you do thumbs down for the opposite and do share with your friends because you know this is the first video of this channel so that pretty much depends upon how the response rate is to upload my next videos my next video is gonna be a DIY lavage power supply I will show you how to make one using an old computer ADX power supply so let me know in the comments below what you think about this video and do not forget to subscribe and click on that notification icon to get notified about my latest uploads my name is Balhar and I'm signing out